This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Village of the Wilmette Zoning Board of Appeals. Ms. Roberts, will you please call the roll? Mr. <coughs> Mr. Colling. Here. Ms. Norick. Here. Mr. Pelleton. Here. Mr. Sermon. Here. Ms. Joka Urban. Here. Chairman Schneider. Here. For those of you new to our proceedings, the purpose of this board is to hear evidence on applications for variances from, the zone, from our zoning ordinance on applications for special use. Based on the evidence we hear this evening, we will make a recommendation to the Village Board of Trustees as to whether the applications that come before us this evening should be granted or denied. We will vote to recommend granting or denying each application for variation based on whether the application meets the standards of review set forth in section 5.4.F of our village ordinance. Applications for special use will be considered based on whether the standards of review set forth in section 5.3.E of our village ordinance are met. The Village Board of <coughs> Trustees will consider the recommendations we are making this evening at the next regularly scheduled meeting on February 11th. Our recommendations to the board are advisory only. The, the Village Board has the final say on all applications and will make its recommendation as to whether to grant or deny them. The Village Board is not legally bound by our recommendations. There's one small exception to this rule. If this board makes a negative recommendation with respect to an application, in order for the Village Board of Trustees to approve that application, a supermajority of five board members, five of seven, must vote to approve it rather than a simple majority of four. There's one other small peculiarity to our proceedings of which you should be aware. This board does not operate by majority vote. We operate instead by a tyranny of four. In other words, no matter how many board members are present at a given meeting, in order to get a positive recommendation from this board, the application must re receive four affirmative votes. Uh, tonight, we have six members present, so uh, we sh uh, a, a vote of three to three, for example, would obviously not not uh, uh, be an affirmative vote. Uh, Ms. Roberts, as Assistant Director of Community Development, sits with us tonight in an advisory capacity only and is not a voting member of the board. So uh, I think uh, in recognition of this unusual feature of our procedure, when we do not have all the members of the board present on a given evening, we give applicants who are scheduled to come before us that night the option of requesting a continuance to the next available date on our schedule. The next available date for any applicant who would like to request a continuance this evening is February 5, 5th of February. There's no penalty for asking for a continuance. No such request will be held against you when your case is eventually heard. If you wish to ask for a continuance, however, you must do so at the beginning of your presentation before making any substantive arguments as to the merits of your case. Please also be aware that if you request a continuance, there's no guarantee as to how many board members will be present on the evening on which your case, to which your case is continued. The cases we shall hear this evening will be heard in the order set forth on the preprinted agenda located on the table near the door where you first came in. When your case is called, please proceed to the podium and state your name and address and tell us exactly why your application meets the standards of review that are applicable to it. Each member of this board is a longtime resident of the village and has visited your property during the past week. In addition, we have received from the village staff these green booklets containing all written information that you have submitted in support of your application, as well as any other correspondence that the village has received. Accordingly, it's not <coughs> necessarily that you repeat what you have already stated in writing. Please just hit the high points with particular attention to why you believe your application meets the standards of review. 
after the applicant has had a chance to speak, we will open the podium to others who wish to speak. Everyone will be permitted to have their say, though we would ask that you keep your comments as short and to the point as possible. After we have heard all oral presentations, I will close the evidence and the members of the board will discuss what they have heard and take a vote. Once the evidence is closed, no further testimony on an application may be offered. The only people entitled to speak during that part of the proceedings will be the members of the board. This meeting is a legal proceeding and all testimony tonight must be given under oath. If you are planning to testify tonight, I would ask you to raise your right hand at this time and be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth in the testimony that you're about to give? If so, please say I do. Ms. Roberts, will you please call the first case? Our first case is 2019 Z44, 735 Leamington Avenue. Uh, this is a request to table to February 5th. They are still working on uh, refining their plans. So moved. Yeah, move to continue this matter until February 5th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This case will be moved to February 5th. Next case. Our next case is uh, 200, I'm sorry, 2019 Z27, 206 Gerard. Uh, the applicants are requesting that the case be tabled to April 15th while they continue to work on their request. Move to uh, continue this matter until April 15th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's been approved to defer it to April 15th. Next case, please. Our next case is 2019 Z42, 1124 Elmwood Avenue. This is a request for a 2.1 foot combined side yard setback variation to permit the construction of a one story addition. <coughs> Good evening, I'm Healy Rice. I'm the architect for the project and I'm here with Bob and Pam, Pam, Pam Pankowskis who are the homeowners. Uh, we're seeking permission to build a one story addition on the east side of the property in order to add a new staircase to the basement and a small back door slash mudroom that is gonna be kind of reconfigured under the existing front stairs. We are seeking permission to encroach into that permitted side yard, combined side yard by two feet. Uh, the house currently is a little over 11 feet from the property line and, or, I'm sorry, um, the combined side yard is required to be 13 feet. We're currently at 11 um, and the ex existing west side yard is the one that impinges on that overall square foot or lineal footage so we need to borrow two feet out of the west side in order to accommodate this staircase. Um, the hardship here is that the front stairs that are in the home, original to the home, are a beautiful curved staircase that goes from the first to the second floor. It's a very tight radius and the stairs under the underneath that go to the basement are extremely limited, steep and very difficult to get anything up and down couches, furniture, or anything larger or cumbersome. So we're hoping to be able to move the stairs from underneath the existing front stair into this small addition, which will only be one story, um, in order to create that access that's much more safe and gives functional space. Um, the, since the house um, is currently two stories, this one story addition really will not impede on the next door neighbors at all, block their lighter air. We're more than 15 feet away from them, so the intent of the ordinance is still in place. We still meet the minimum side yard with our addition um, that would be required as the lot's 53 feet wide. Um, I think those are really the highlights of the case. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Have you talked with the neighbor? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. talk to the neighbor. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've talked with the neighbor. Gave give, him, give your name and address. Sorry, uh, Robert Pankowskis, 1124 Elmwood, and I've talked to my next door neighbor that is closest to the addition, and shared a set of the plans with her, with them, her, and um, they had no objections at that time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any questions for the applicant? Comments or questions? I think it's, I mean, it's a, a request to just utilize the, the property a little better and, and to bring it to more of a standard with having at least a, a wall to hang coats or something in the mudroom compared to others. If, if there are no other questions for the applicant, I will. Oh, I do have one question. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No. I, I noticed, I, I think you'll need. Uh, unless I'm wrong, uh, another variance. 
because of the air conditioning condensers that are there. Don't they have to move? They are farther back than the addition will be. So okay, there but it either. does, it, you won't need to move those? No, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. It looked like it was fairly close when you put the, the porch on. No, they're, they're, they're fine, back. yeah. Okay. So is now the addition, that whole, that whole space is existing where it says eating area. I didn't get around. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, all of that. The the main house is, all is sort of that L shape. Oh, Correct. Okay. It's existing. Yes. Yeah, we're doing a bunch of work inside, but this was the last piece that um, sort I of helped see. make the whole thing come together. Okay. So this is to get access to the basement area. Correct. Right. Is there any other access to the basement area? No. Up right now, it's just under the stairs, under the front stairs. So we're taking that out to be able to move the new stairs into this addition. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll close it unless uh, somebody else wants to comment uh, on this case. Uh, seeing none, I thank you very much. I will close testimony and uh, ask for a motion. Uh, Mr. I move to I'll recommend granting well, a request uh, for a 2.1 foot combined side yard setback to permit the construction of a one-story addition at 1124 Elmwood Avenue in accordance with the plan submitted. Second. Second. I, um, I have no problem with this request. I think uh, the addition is um, a modest addition that will make uh, the entry into the house uh, more useful uh, and will make access to the basement a much easier proposition. Um, I, I think two feet can easily be spared, so. Yeah, I agree, since, since there's no other access to the, the basement area, um, this is a, a you know, small request. You know, initially when I looked at it, it looked like you're pretty tight with the neighbors, but they, they don't, they're not complaining, uh, and there's no other access, then I think there is a hardship. And, I concur with them. I do as well. I would have preferred a letter from the neighbor rather than just having to take your word for it, but we'll go with your word. I agree. I, I, there is a, some level of hardship relative to the access to the basement, uh, and uh, this is a, a small request, and so I can, I can support it as well. Let me go for a vote. Ms. Joker Urban. Aye. Mr. Colleen. Aye. Ms. Nork. Yes. Mr. Pellison. Yes. Mr. Sermon. Yes. Chairman Schneider. Yes. So this is a unanimous recommendation to the Board of Trustees. Uh, you may want to attend that meeting, although they may not spend a lot of time on it, but it, to be safe, the meeting is on February 11th. I move to authorize the chairman to prepare the report and recommendation for the Zoning Board of Appeals for case number 2019-C-42. Uh, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Our next case is 2020 Z1, 1120 Michigan Avenue. This is a request for a one foot retaining wall side yard setback variation to permit the replacement and expansion of a retaining wall on the north lot line. Good evening, my name is Ryan Kettlecamp of Kettlecamp and Kettlecamp Landscape Architecture, 1315 Sherman Place in Evanston, representing uh, Lynn and Jeff Chikazian, who are the homeowners. Um, in seeking a variance for, or a um, uh, a waiver of the requirement that the, s that the retaining wall on the north side yard be one foot off the property line. Um, the, we're asking that essentially that the existing retaining wall uh, that was there that allowed for an eight foot four wide driveway, uh, that the new retaining wall be put into that exact same location, uh, which would be still continue to allow for them to have eight feet four of clearance, as opposed <coughs> to if the ordinance were adhered to, 
the driveway would be pinched down to seven feet four and they would no longer have access to um, uh, to the garage behind the house as they have the existing what was the former one there's a there's a retaining wall there now but what was the before it was the demolished day? during the course but of that was that abutted the property line to the north that did uh, but it was entirely on the Chikazian's property that's correct the, uh, yeah that's correct and so in, in effect they're seeking a remove and replace I guess would be the um, uh, the term that we would typically use in this situation but you have replaced it pardon isn't it replaced it is replaced um, and if you I, I, we were just talking if you if you look at one of these drawings that you could pull up uh, yes that shows the plan there you go That's the one, yeah, yeah. I don't know, does this work? Yeah, Tim's working on it. If you could move it up so that... There you go. Yeah, I see there, the, 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 there's this blue hashed line. Yes. Is that the existing or the new? That was where the wall would have been required to go, have been installed if it had been um, as per the ordinance. So you'll okay. see that the red line is the old retaining wall, yes. uh, curb and retaining wall. Okay. That was demolished when the driveway was ripped out. Okay. And that one was abutting the property line. And then if the ordinance is adhered to, that new retaining wall is, um, would have been required to have been uh, one foot closer to the house. And then that would have pushed uh, that would have created a pinch point between uh, the house and the retaining wall of seven feet four inches, which is then undrivable. As it was with the eight feet four, the homeowner during the course of the past 20 years has occasionally scraped the wall, um, but they just didn't feel that they could do it at, if the wall were required to be moved into the one foot side yard setback requirement. So what you have now installed, you have a, you're abutting the, the north property. That's correct. Right? The wall is entirely on the Chikazian's property, but it is it was uh, it, it was in the exact same location that the red uh, where the previous retaining wall was. And so then on the on the adjoining house on the north, there's a gap there of about what, a foot and a half. Uh, there's a gap of a foot and a half, and there'll be a fence that goes back in there to separate that property from... Um, what property is that? Uh, that is, uh, that's the property to the north. That is 1126 Michigan Avenue. So that, that, that gap property is theirs? That gap property is theirs, yeah, that's correct. There's a letter from the, those, the owners at 1126 saying that letters. they have no issue with it. Correct. I have a question, or do you want to go ahead? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, I just so you're going to put the railing on top of the new wall. The there's going to be a six foot six uh, fence that goes back up on top of the uh, wall. The neighbors allowed the Chikazians to remove the old fence that was up there. Okay. For the purposes of construction access, and then immediately after uh, the uh, construction is complete. Um, it's actually been scheduled for next week. Uh, there's a fence contractor that's ready to go in and then put the uh, six foot six fence back up and into uh, back into position. Is it a solid fence? It is a solid fence, yes. But it tears down towards the, the bottom. It tears down following the same line of the uh, of the, or the contour of the uh, of the existing retaining wall. That's right. Uh, I was just curious if you look at the section of it yep. and if you look at the second, uh, bay from the right, I'll call them bays where the columns are. Yeah, up on the top there, right above the group of notes. Oops, right there. Right there, yeah. Is there a drop there? It, you know, it looks like the existing, it says existing neighbor's grade, and then the fence. Is there much of a drop there? If there's over 18 inches in a drop, I think you'd have to have a handrail or a higher fence. Um, well, the fence will be six foot six at that location. Plus, so it, it was the neighbor's fence that was removed. So the the fence height, the six foot six, is measured from the from the from the neighbor's grade. The Chikazians are just replacing the fence that was there previously. Okay, but it shows the a note right above their existing neighbor's grade, which is higher than the fence, uh, or just below it. 
Oh, that's not the fence. That is the retaining wall. That's the retaining wall. So that's oh, okay. So, so that's the retain. Just okay. I thought the fence was the area between. <laughs> no, that, just uh, the retaining wall. The fence okay. is the fence is not shown. Uh, the fence see. is not shown there. There's okay, so there on, wouldn't be a drop. Correct. Exactly. Okay. On top of this retaining wall, there'll be uh, six foot six additional as the village requires or okay. not requires, but um, okay. I mandates. understand. Thank you. You're welcome. I was surprised when I visited the property um, that to see that the retaining wall was in. I didn't see any reference to that in the materials. Could you address that point? Yeah, the um, the contractor was ref uh, was concerned about losing the uh, was concerned about losing the construction window. We didn't know what the weather was going to be, um, and he wanted to um, go ahead with the project and ask forgiveness uh, uh, in you know and ask forgiveness in this situation. So the, the contractor had to put that wall in. Um, the wall, as it's engineered, you can see in this particular section, there are 11-foot pilings that go down and into the ground. Um, normally, a retaining wall wouldn't have to have that kind of structure, but in effect, what this wall is doing is it's also supporting the neighbor's retaining wall and driveway. So it's, this is acting as shoring, or the, the, <coughs> the structure that was built actually acts as shoring for the, uh, for the neighbor's driveway and retaining wall that they have back there during the course of, during the course of construction. Um, uh, again, they were afraid of losing uh, their window and went ahead and installed it as per the, uh, uh, the engineer's recommendation, which was then sinking those steel I-beams 11 feet down and into the ground so that the shoring on the neighbor's property was maintained um, uh, and uh, uh, with the understanding that the variance had not yet been granted. When did they apply for the variance compared to when the wall was built? Um, so we typically, as a committee, we don't look upon people that do their work before and understand. then ask for I'll, I'll forgiveness. Sh I'll show you really quickly what happened. Um, we believed that we could uh, put the wall where the wall was approved to be, which was one foot off the property line. Um, okay. We went out and we had a surveyor stake the property line. The surveyor staked the property line. In this photo that you see here, the white line is where the surveyor essentially staked the property line. Um, and what we then we thought we could um, we thought that we had the clearance to get a car by so then there's the but when it was actually field marked out by the surveyor the property line is where the white line is you can see the location of the old concrete curb or the existing concrete curb slash retaining wall um, that uh, that abuts the property line and then the pink uh, mark is where uh, the was where the steel I-beams were then that would support the retaining wall uh, were proposed to go. Uh, we marked it out in the field, immediately noted that there was only seven feet four of clearance between, uh, between these projections that you see on the side of the historic house. And um, within one hour, I was in the village hall um, applying for the variance. Okay. So um, again, we went into it with believing that we could get the car by. Applied before the work was done. Oh, yes. Okay. And then the homeowner saw that the, um, that the the homeowner saw the, the condition as, as it was marked in the field and they said, there's no way that I can get through there. She said, I've scraped this wall so many times before. Mm -hmm. If I have one foot less than we previously have, I just don't believe that I can do it. Mm -hmm. So I immediately came down and I met with um, uh, uh, the city engineer as well as, um, uh, as, as Lisa okay. and, and, and applied for and immediately applied for the variance that same day that we found the field condition. When sure. was this? Um, December 4th ish. Pardon, Lisa? December 4th? December 4th. Okay. December 4th? Mm -hmm. So when you look at the pictures you have there? Yes. Um, is, is that on the upper left hand corner? Here? Yeah. So is, I know this was a uh, kind of an add on, right, to an existing home? Uh, they removed uh, they removed a garage and it's it's a modification to an existing home. The guest house at the back remains, and there was a bridge structure in between, and they modified that bridge structure in between uh, so that they had a uh, a larger uh, a larger kitchen. Uh, but it's the 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 footprint of the. It's not an I, I wouldn't describe it as an, as a tack on or an addition. And in fact, the garage, which was. Uh, there was another variance you can see it in the history of the project that was sought by the architect the uh, the old garage was across the 10-foot side yard setback and um, 
uh, that has now been brought back in to be in compliance with the with the side yard setbacks. Okay, so as I look at this, it looks like new construction to me. Is that is that right? No. Uh, uh, no. It looks new. That's why the only reason I'm asking. Uh, On the upper left hand corner, and the lower left hand side. Up here. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, when, that, you, when you look at the building, it looks new. No, that's the that's the that's original the that's original. the original okay. 1915 okay. Uh, Van Bergen house. Yeah. Right. And it's a historic significance. Yeah, yeah we that. can't touch the house. Um, I I jokingly said to the homeowner, "Can we remove or can we cut a notch into that um, uh, to that buttress there?" And we were told by village staff when they heard that we were suggesting that you absolutely cannot do that. So, um, but again. Uh, j just joking there. So it's a registered landmark. Yes. There's a little sign outside. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Can we go back to the to the section to the section that this is not maybe r relevant to the case, but I'm just curious. Why the variation on the on the depth of the of the piers? Um, uh, the variation on the depth of the piers has to do with the amount of weight that's actually being supported then on the neighbor's side or the, the bearing of the neighbor's driveway and retaining wall on this so that there's um, uh, greater support needed in the middle. Um, at least that was what the structural engineer told us. Those, and again, they're 11 feet in the ground is how deep those um, steel I-beams have been, been embedded in the ground, even though they only project up four. Um, but they have to be at least 42 inches or something, right? Uh, ty typically, in a situation like that, they would be 42 inches, but these are 11 feet into okay. the ground. Yeah, because of the the pressure of the exactly. So, uh, it, it help me to understand the exigency of this. The, the contractor wanted to do it before conditions change. These were pile driven in. Uh, they were pile driven in. Yes, or no, no. They were they were drilled. Uh, they were drilled, put in place. So they weren't pile driven in. They were drilled, put in place. And then set, or um, and then uh, set in concrete. So these these I beam kind of things were pushed 11 feet and then surrounded with concrete. Yes. Any other questions? No. Nope. The applicant. Hearing none. Um, thank you very much. We'll see if someone has any other comments. Thank you. Appreciate it. Does anyone want to comment on this request? Seeing no one, we'll close testimony. And uh, can we have a motion? Thank you. Oh. Mr. Kalang. For case uh, 2020Z. Dash Z dash O one move to recommend granting request for a one foot retaining wall, side yard setback variation to permit the replacement and expansion of a retaining wall on the north lot line at eleven twenty Michigan Avenue in accordance with the plan submitted. Second. So first of all, it's troubling that people knew that they needed to to get a variance and went ahead anyhow. I find I find that problematic and I don't know how the village deals with those things, um, but I think it should be dealt with. Um, as to the variation, I mean, here you do have a historical home. You are replacing an existing retaining wall. You are maintaining an 8.4 driveway, which couldn't be smaller and usable. So there are certainly hardships that, uh, in my mind, um, you know, make it easy for me to, to say I, I you know I, I can approve this and go along with this but I do find it you know unsettling that somebody would just say okay we got a problem and we're just going to do it and ask for forgiveness later I, I think yeah. that's just you know not how things should be done so yeah I agree with um, John completely um, I'm an architect I've built plenty of commercial spaces the contractor knew that that wall was in poor shape. If he didn't, he shouldn't be doing the work. You know, the existing one that was there. Um, it, it's evident that there could, would, there would be an issue. So, um, I don't know. What, were they reported for this, or did they? They nobody reported the I don't issue. So. No. Okay. 
Yeah, it just it's it's bothersome for our board because of not just this case, but other cases where uh, people just ask for forgiveness and oh, I didn't need, I didn't know I needed that. So instead of making a phone call or instead of the general contractor approaching it, I mean, he put put you on this, and it's really more his responsibility than the landscape architect. He does the design work, and he's not the one designing the wall itself. So I agree that is uh, bothersome, and I think it's something, like John said, the village needs to take a look at long term. Um, but I do understand the hardship and the small driveway, and it would not be usable at uh, seven foot four. But the tightest parking space you'd create ever would be eight feet wide, so. Right. Um, yeah, cars are six, six and a half feet wide. So I can understand and agree with you guys, you gentlemen, about the, the hardships that are here. I, I disagree with the, the contractor's uh, take on this and the fact that he needed to get it done immediately because especially if he's drilling, well, it, it, he can get through a couple of feet of frozen ground and it, we haven't had a hard freeze, sustained freeze. So um, I, I'm... I, I'm a bit miffed about why it is that he felt compelled to go ahead with this other than his own convenience. Um, and uh, so that, that, that part of it is troubling to me. And yet we run into it often. So, um, but I, I do agree that the, the hardship exists and I do think it's, you know, they're rebuilding on their exact location. so it, I don't have an issue with the request itself. I'm in complete agreement with everything that's been said. I was also miffed when I got out there and saw the wall and realized that the packet hadn't said a word about it. Um, but I believe a hardship exists and that there are grounds for granting uh, the variance. When we have a case like this, we always ask uh, ourselves whether had the applicant come to us before installing this retaining wall, I don't think we would have not approved it because it, there's clearly a hardship and it essentially replaces an existing uh, badly decaying uh, retaining wall uh, that abuts the north property line. So all they're doing is replacing it and it's necessary to have the, they can't, they couldn't adjust uh, the historical house to the south to widen the driveway, so they were really limited. But I agree with all my colleagues here that uh, I can't imagine there was such an emergency that the adjoining driveway was about to collapse, so they had to do something quickly, or that they were digging the further digging down the slope of the dry of the of. of their driveway to, in order to necessitate an immediate uh, support to the adjacent soils. So I have the same concern. I, I know we've, we've dealt with this before. Um, and I, I, it is, the retaining wall is a very nice solution. And uh, it's just the process that I have some concern about. Um, but I don't know that we can undo what has been done or should undo what has been done. Uh, the board might consider some remedy, but the board of trustees, I'm saying, but uh, <coughs> I think I have no other choice but to support this. I'd like to add just one thing. To me, from all the construction projects I've done over the years, it appears more um, <coughs> an opportunity or a convenience to keep the project on schedule. And I think that's probably why they went ahead with it. So. Any other comments? Hearing none, shall we take a vote? Mr. Colang. Yes. Mr. Sermon. Yes. Ms. Norick. Yes. Mr. Pelleton. Yes. Ms. Choka Urban. Yes. Chairman Schneider. Yes. 
Please, this you can come up here. This comes with a positive recommendation, obviously, to the village board. I suggest you, you or your representative, be there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You can just sign this for me. This says the village board yes. date for you. Thanks. I move to recommend granting the request. I'm sorry, I already did that. We already did that. Move to authorize the chairman to prepare the report and recommendation for the Zoning Board of Appeals for case number 2020-Z01. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Would you call the next case, please? Our next case is 2019 Z45, 1111 Central Avenue. This is a request for a special use for an art studio to permit the operation of a dance studio. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. First, I would just like to thank the board um, for giving us a continuance. Um, your name again, please. Yes. My name is Jana Bennett, um, and I um, am here to request a special use permit for my dance studio, Skunk Works Dance, at 1111 Central Avenue in the, uh, in, in the Village Center. Um, I'm uh, born and raised in Chicago's North Shore, um, and I'm a professional dancer, choreographer, and I'm the founder of Skunk Works Dance. For those of you who weren't here at the prior meeting, for those of you who were here, I'm just going to do a really fast summary of what I had presented last time. At Skunk Works, what we offer is pre-professional dance training for youth ages 3 through 18. We also offer adult classes as well. Our hours are from 9.30 to 11.15 a.m. and from 4.15 to 9.15 p.m. on weekdays and from 9 to 5 p.m. on weekends. Mainly our business revenue comes from our studio classes, our performing companies, but we also will be um, selling merchandise and apparel, which will generate sales tax for the, uh, for the village of Wilmette. In the end, why I chose Wilmette was because I, I did a pretty extensive study where I looked at every single dance studio on the North Shore, and I found that there was a pretty extensive market need for another dance studio, but especially a pre-professional dance studio. And 1111 Central for us is really the perfect home. You know, this past semester, we've actually been operating in the Village Center, renting from Actors Training Center and their storefront studio space. And we had an extraordinarily successful first semester in that space. Additionally, 1111 Central's former tenant was Art Body, which was a dance fitness studio. So it's literally built out perfectly for a dance studio. And finally, when you're looking at our clientele, it's mainly children and their, and, and their, uh, and their parents. And especially in the Village Center and on that Central Avenue, there are just a lot of businesses that we really believe we can bring value to through foot traffic and therefore revenue to these businesses. If there's one thing I really want you guys to take away is that Skunk Work Stance is a business that's here to be around for many, many years to come and hopefully will become a legacy and something that Wilmette holds up with pride. Um, just a really kind of fun update since the last time I, I, I saw you guys. This past Sunday, we hosted our very first Dance of Palooza, a free day of dance event. Um, and after one week of just traditional marketing of putting up um, posters on people's windows, we have 53 brand new participants. Um, I mean, each and every one of them is actually registering for class. Additionally, um, we also had five new inquiries and people registering for class as well, just from word of mouth from those students. Um, and so it's just really showing me that, that this, this market need that I had researched and anticipated really is here in this community, and this community is really looking for a dance studio of this type. You know, we, we ended up getting a continuance because after um, I went through and explained our business, um, and I had multiple different people, including Carol Debo of Actors Training Center, Julie Cohen of Haba Haba. Um, I also had Mimi of Latin Lassie write a letter. And now in the supplemental agenda, you'll also see Julie from the, uh, from the chamber supporting us, as well as multiple customers talk on our behalf. Um, the owner of Melody Spa had objected to us coming into the space due uh, to the basis of sound. Um, but, you know, a few days before this meeting, um, in, in the prior meeting, our landlord had graciously offered to put a full soundproof wall on the adjoining wall in between our two businesses. Um, he was not uh, able to be in attendance at that meeting. Um, Al, Al is in, in, uh, in attendance here today. Um, and obviously, I'm not able to speak on behalf of what he's offering, but I'm happy to answer any questions, especially from those of you guys who weren't here at the prior meeting. Um, and I welcome your questions. Thank you. That was the, the main issue uh, after 
at that meeting, and uh, uh, you couldn't answer questions about the uh, the details about the soundproofing to the west. And uh, I assume the owner is here today. He is here today. Yes. And he can answer. Quite, do we mind if we? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sir. Good, Good evening, evening, Mr. Chairman. Your name? Thank you. Al Belmonte with Wesley Realty Group. And uh, we own and manage the uh, the building. And I um, I apologize. I, I was not here um, at the last um, meeting. Um, had I known, I would have made an effort to get here. I, I had a conflict. Um, we were aware of um, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Lou's concerns about sound. We, that was brought to our attention. Um, Ms. Bennett did bring it to our attention. We have every intention to make sure that Ms. Lou's business remains viable. And um, if sound attenuation is what we need to, to do in order to create that viability, uh, we will do it. And we did offer to do it. Um, and at the moment, I don't have the specifications. I can tell you that we've, um, I personally soundproofed a lot of um, commercial spaces, office spaces. We've built out spaces for therapists who are very sensitive to soundproof in between, um, in between therapy rooms. We've done soundproofing for other studios. Um, I've done soundproofing in residential buildings and condo buildings, and, and, and it's always a little different. Um, we are going to work with the contractor that Ms. Bennett has to achieve the necessary level of soundproofing to mitigate any kind of noise transmission between the dance studio and the spa. Um, I, can, I can assure you that, um, and we will work with the village. Um, if necessary, we'll hire an acoustical consultant to give us a detail. Um, but I, uh, I'm in the business to make sure that my businesses, my tenants, remain in business so they can pay rent. Um, we want to make sure that Ms. Lou's business remains viable. We want to make sure that Ms. Bennett's business uh, is viable, and we'll do what we need to do to get that taken care of. We have some architects and professional contractors on the up here, so maybe they would like. Um, I do have. Ask you I some do specifics. have a question, uh, just so I understand. <coughs> my understanding of the project right now is there's an existing wall, demising wall. Yes. And then the ceiling goes on top of that wall. That's correct. So I think the and. If you'd have it's got to go right on the It's got to go to the underneath the deck. Yeah, it's got to modify the the lay in ceiling on both sides and go. Right yeah, we may have to readjust the grid and have it because it it really makes no no sense to just go right to the to the to the underside sure. of the grid because sound does go pass right across over. the top. Okay, that's the main um, issue. There are no um, um, sure. wall to wall penetrations. Um, at, at this point, it's just a solid wall, but yeah, you're right. We have to yeah. go to the underside of the deck to make sure yeah. nothing transmits. And uh, you may, they're going to build the wall right up to the, ne the, the other wall? They're going to, are they going to, they're just going to? Truthfully, I don't know. I mean, I've used um, um, cush board um, where we've applied it directly to the wall, which is, mm. you know, deadened sound completely. We've, we've built out. Um, separate walls and um, use two by six um, studs with um, bats in between and, and another sheet of five eighths inch drywall, which has um, also worked. Um, I kind of don't want to take a lot of the floor space away, so we're going to look at different alternatives. Yeah, I don't know if you need, unless the height you'd need, you know, you might be able to get by with a two by four. Or two by four, yeah. Uh, but then I would set it away from the wall a little. Right, to so create an no air gap. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, one thing I've determined from designing projects is this, the sound sometimes is at the very bottom and you need to caulk. Caulk the little, bottom, yeah. the bottom plate, yep. Yeah, yeah typically I'll, I'll put a, a fiber um, pad on the bottom plate and then we caulk and then put, and put our finish on, on, yeah, on the outside. Yeah, because when they put the drywall on, they just take a piece and yep. they put it on top and sometimes there's a little gap there. Yeah. So as long as you take care of all those, I think, what is the structure? What is the structure? Is it a, uh, 
it's an older building. Is it some sort of tile and it's plastered over? Well, um, really? it was, it, it formerly was a stationary uh, store and it was, uh, it was demised many years ago into individual spaces. So there, it is, um, it is a frame partition right now. Oh, yeah. okay. But the underside of the structure that you're going up to is that, uh, like an old tin ceiling or oh that oh the underside yeah yeah it's an old tin ceiling it's okay. uh, yeah so um and it and it's applied there as well yeah yeah yep. okay yep. i think that sounds good to me yeah, right. <laughs> excuse me so you are you are committing to do what is necessary we already have yes i mean we we need to uh, Make her happy. <laughs> I need to make her happy. So yes, we we and and I need to run a store. Um, uh, so yes. And it's done at the owner's expense. Yes. The wall. Yeah. Okay. And so it's not going to change their lease. No, their lease stays the okay. same. Right. And how, what about the timing of this? Because I know that Ms. Bennett wants to move in and start using the space as quickly as possible. As soon as it's approved by the village board, we're ready to you know pull a permit and go yeah as long as it's done prior to the start of class oh yeah it has to be done prior to occupancy and and um, you know again we have a commitment to the other tenant to make sure that that's handled in the same way you know and in my opinion if i don't if i do it I, if i don't do it i'm going to have the same issue whether it's Ms. bennett or someone else so um it and I think we appreciate that and, and, and understand that. We've just got pages and pages of people. The tenant, uh, the existing tenant is a um, little less than completely secure about how this is all going to work out. And I understand that. And, and I was floored by the, the negative response. To be honest with you, I did not expect that. I, I, you know, we, we had a tenant in there for many years, Art Body, and we never, you know, we never heard anything and there was never an issue. Um, when I got the email saying that um, there was concern about noise, and I said, well, you know, we've got to do something. We'll take care of it. And that's how we, how we approached it. Um, and I'm here tonight to commit to that. I have one last question. So any outlets that are required along that wall, you'll we'll have to bring reinstall out. those or, or bring them out? We'll have okay. to bring them out, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, no more questions. For, thank you very much for... Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I know uh, anyone else would like to speak on this, please. Good afternoon. My name is Brad Bennett. I am Jana's husband. Uh, we live at 827 North Damon, Unit 2 in Chicago. I was in attendance last month. Um, I obviously didn't speak. And um, I have no background in dance. I have no background in architecture. Um, <coughs> But I am an attorney, and I do want to provide a little bit of context and also fact check uh, a lot of the statements that were made at the last meeting. Um, as for the four supporters that spoke on behalf of Gianna, Carol Lebo spoke from the perspective of her then current landlord and also a longtime business owner in Wilmette. She also talked about the evolution of uh, downtown Wilmette and how Jana's business would complement um, what I believe you guys are trying to uh, accomplish here. Kathleen McAllister is a current adult student of Jana's and a longtime resident of Wilmette. And she too spoke about Jana and how uh, her business would complement the downtown. Julie Cohen, uh, the owner of Hubba Hubba, spoke on behalf of uh, Jana and from the perspective of a retail business owner. And lastly, Verd Nolan testified as the father of one of the children that attends uh, Jana's studio, but also as a resident, not of Wilmette, but of Northbrook. And he stated that by picking up and dropping off his daughter, he's spent $400 at uh, Melody Spa, and I think that is something to consider, whereas most of Jana's students are children, and so that requires a parent or a caregiver giver to pick them up or drop them off. Classes are usually 45 minutes to an hour, and that is usually not a lot of time to go back home, so to kill that time, I envision uh, these parents would naturally 
probably go to Melody Spa, run errands, and otherwise spend money in downtown Wilmette. As for Melody Spa, my perspective when Casey Liu, the owner of Melody Spa, and Ivy Liu, her sister who acted as an interpreter, testified, it was this us versus them mentality. And as Jana's husband, I know that cannot be anywhere further from the truth. Uh, I personally believe that Jana's studio will complement Melody Spa as well as downtown Wilmette. And when I read the petition that was presumably um, <laughs> at Melody Spa that they were asking their clients to sign, if I didn't know any of the details of this case and I was about to get a massage, my signature would be on this page, basically accusing um, Jana Studio of, potential, if she moves in, completely destroying the serenity of the spa business. And number one, that can't be further from the truth. Number two is Ms. Liu uh, testified that um, she wants to work with other people and other businesses. And I know firsthand that uh, Melody Spa has not reached out to Jana or Skunk Works Dance uh, to find out exactly what type of business that is. And as for our body, uh, Miss Liu testified, and I do have time stamps for this video if you guys do want to um, fact check me, um, is that she stated that um, our body was a yoga meditation studio more than once, and that is inaccurate. Our body uh, was a dance studio, fitness studio, and I know Jana has with her uh, videos uh, from our body, which is still in business there in Evanston now, um, and that there was music, it was uh, loud at times, but it was definitely not a yoga medita meditation studio. I looked on their website, they don't offer any yoga, they don't offer any meditation, so that uh, is definitely not correct. Also, it was stated that Art Body's business hours were from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., so when Melody Spa opened, Art Body was kind of shutting down for the day. Uh, per Art Body's website, they mainly do host morning, morning classes from 8 to noon, um, but I know firsthand that uh, our body at the time when they were in Wilmette were sub-renting uh, two individuals, namely Jana, uh, to hold classes there. And I know Jana held some of her classes at our body last year. Questions were also posed how they were getting along with uh, the pizza restaurant Big Tomato. Uh, Mr. Sermon, I think you commented, or you asked if they could smell pizza. Uh, they said they could. Uh, you said that that was indicative that it wasn't uh, soundproofed. Uh, when they were inquired about how they got along with Big Tomato, they said, quote unquote, business is not very good, stating that they open on 4 p.m. and mainly there's some noise on Fridays, but they spoke to the owners of Big Tomato and that they agreed to turn down their music. Um, looking at the website of Big Tomato, uh, there's conflicting uh, information. Some say they open at 3, others say they open at 11 a.m. Um, but again, when Melody Spa moved into their current location, they were between a dance studio and a restaurant. And as for Melody Spa uh, itself, um, when I was listening to the testimony last month, what I envisioned was uh, individual rooms where people were getting massages and, um, you know, very quiet, very serene. And what I come to find out after last month's meeting is that the spa is set up uh, in one large room where it's everyone's getting a massage uh, really next to each other. There is not a separate waiting room, and the waiting room is facing the street. Um, people can talk, um, the telephone rings, uh, that can be heard. So, uh, and again, I don't want to sound um, as if I'm painting Melody Spot in a negative light. I think it's a very good concept, but what came across to me as an audience member last month was that uh, 
that setup. So knowing that it is uh, a little bit different, I think that is important to know as well. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone else would wish to comment? <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ivy Liu. My name is Kenzie Liu. Right, so, uh, re regarding about um, what Mr. What? I'm sorry. Mr. Ben. Mr. Ben's question about the big uh, grand room. So that is more reason we need more quiet. I mean, I don't know if you ever entered there. Well, if you ever enter there, you find out it's really peaceful, very quiet place, even if not customer next, I mean, next to each other, because they know that this spa is the place to relax. So, I mean, I don't think that is the reason. I mean, we can have the dance studio, I mean, loud or telephone, whatever, in that spa. So regarding about that question, I mean, like, we still, a customer still prefer relaxing and quiet space. Of course, we will come other business to come next to her business. Uh, I mean, definitely downtown Womat need new business but also need to protect the existing business. So for the owner, I believe I'm the, um, I'm the owner, I have the rental buildings, but I don't have commercial, okay? So I don't understand, I mean, if next tenants coming a conflict with the previous tenants, we definitely, okay, we're going to consider it, but first we need to stand on existing tenants right to make sure they are going to run their business okay uh, they are not going to have any issue so i believe if as the owner you need to get the new business but you need to protect your existing business mm, what else mm. so and another thing is my sister, she invests a lot of money, and this is her only business. So, I mean, she need to get out some money from this, and $30 each hour, she working really hard for our uh, year and a half to build this business. So right now, she gets probably about 900 to 1,000 customer each month. I mean, this is really going to get a big, huge benefit for the WMAT uh, residents. How much they can, only $30 that they don't want now or whatever thing, then they can spend on their wellness. So, I mean, and she's the only, uh, I think, reflexology spa in WMAT. Are there any other spas going to charge at least $55 per hour to do the massage? So, I mean, I think definitely her business is gives a lot of uh, people can invest in their house. Mm, that's what I have here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I guess I just have to say, you know, I'm, as a commercial architect, I feel comfortable with what the landlord's proposed mm -hmm. and his knowledge on how to solve this. Okay. You should feel comfortable and okay. I think he's going beyond what other landlords would do and by doing this yeah, and making sure it's done right. So I would feel good about that. Okay. So only thing I want to protect my sister is I want to make sure before they get the permit, they have the approved sound approving. That means that is not going to affect her business later. So we just want to make sure, I mean, we're not engineer, we're not um, architect, so we don't understand any of this thing. But from our prospect, we just want, okay, no issues later on. That's it. I mean, they may, just so you know, they may need to get into your space just to modify the ceiling to be able to do all that. But mm -hmm. that would be a very short time if, if they needed to. I think you're going to be better, you know, much better off than you were before. Sure. Okay. So. All right. 
Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Roberts, do they need a, the, the owner need a permit to do what they plan to do? Yes. Yes. And so you have some opportunity to review the... Uh, I, the I, I'm not exactly sure what the plan reviewer will look at. He is not, um, as far as I know, an acoustical expert, um, so he may not be able to judge the quality of what's been submitted, but he can ask them to verify, you know, with an engineer, have it stamped, you know, that kind of thing. <coughs> Any other comment? No, no one else from the audience? I see no one else, so uh, we close testimony. Can we have a motion? Mr. Sir. I move to recommend granting a request for a special use for the art studio, dance studio at, at one 1111, sorry, Central Avenue, in accordance with the plan submitted to the zoning board, uh, will determine that this <coughs> special use runs with the use. I'll second that. Mr. Chairman. Uh, as I discussed with the landlord, you know, I'm confident that he's going to construct the wall properly um, as long as he follows what we talked about. So, um, and I don't think it will impact the neighbor at all. I think you'll be surprised how well it will work. So um, given that, I can support it. And, and I would uh, agree. Um, I'm quite frankly very impressed with the amount of money that you're making on this yoga uh, um, um, spa. Um, $300,000, $360,000 a year is a very good business. Um, that said, um, we don't have the ability, this board doesn't, to um, in check up on the landlord and check up to make sure that everything is done correctly. Um, your only recourse would be to sue the landlord. Um, so um, I hope it doesn't come to that. I, I, he is here and he seems like he's interested in, in making a good faith effort to do it. And I believe that the, the um, dance studio is going to try as well. Um, and so hopefully it'll work out uh, well for everybody. I just wanted to add, I believe from what the landlord's offered that he, if there was an issue, he'd try, he'd remedy this, you know, remedy the problem with the solution. I missed the last meeting where this was discussed, um, but after reading the minutes from that meeting um, and hearing tonight's testimony, I feel reassured by the landlord's presence and his commitment to making uh, the improvements necessary to soundproof uh, the spa space from any music that will uh, be played in the dance studio, and I feel that I can support this. Yeah, I think at, at our last meeting, I mean, it was continued specifically to hear from the landlord, and I think you made a very compelling case about what you're going to do, and you have two tenants, you need to make them both happy because you need to get rent from both, and that makes perfect sense to me, and I think, you know, that was really what I was looking for, and, you know, you supply that, so I'm, I am fine with this. Yeah, I too feel comfortable with them. Um, with the uh, presentation tonight and that, um, you know, the concerns that were expressed at the meeting, which I also missed, um, are, have been adequately addressed. I can support uh, <clears throat> I think uh, at the last meeting we were a little puzzled why the, why the lease didn't include a provision to soundproof that wall, um, but uh, that maybe due to the inexperience or the lack of legal help from uh, for, for them any in any case we today we have the landlord here he has made a commitment very explicitly that he will do his best to soundproof that wall and uh, that's what we uh, all we can do is rely on that and uh, we assume that he will do what he said he will do here today. Uh, and that's a good thing. And um, let's, uh, I hope we can move and the Board of Trustees will move so you can get that 
space improved as necessary and that you can move in as quickly as possible. We have it. Mr. Sermon. Yes. Mr. Pelletan. Yes. Mr. Culling. Yes. Ms. Nork. Yes. Ms. Choker Urban. Yes. Chairman Schneider. Yes. This comes with a positive recommendation to the Board of Trustees that will meet on February, did I miss it again? 11. Was it 11? I move to authorize the chairman to prepare the report and recommendation for the Zoning Board of Appeals for case number 2019-Z45. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next case. Our next case is 2020-Z2, 519 4th Street. This is a request for a special use for an animal hospital. Um, I'm Barbara Royal. I'm the veterinarian and owner of the Royal Treatment Veterinary Center. I live at 311 Central in Wilmette, um, and I'm applying for the special use to uh, purchase the building at 519 Fourth Street and have a, a small private integrated veterinary medical center there. Um, the highlights of the case, <laughs> my case to you, is are that um, I have been practicing in this area for over 20 years. I, um, I recently opened a very small um, facility at um, 405 Linden, which I came to the same board and asked for <laughs> approval then. Um, and it's gone very, very well um, and in such a way that I didn't really expect in a certain sense. So um, when the building around the corner came up to um, be purchased, I was like, wow, that's about the perfect size and perfect building for me. Um, and even though it seemed but a little- You are now where, excuse me? Where I'm around, I, well, my main clinic is in the city. So I have a clinic in the city at 4130 North Rockwell, right. um, which is a, a, I probably have about 8,000 square feet there. Um, and that facility um, I've been running for, you know, I don't know, maybe 15 years or so. Um, then I, because I live in Wilmette, I thought, you know what, I have so many people who pretty much come to my house and bring their pets um, <laughs> and don't want to drive into the city. I just, I opened this small facility on Linden. Um, I am very dedicated to the North Shore. A lot of my clients are driving from the North Shore down to the city with some irritation um, to be in the city at my city practice. And so it would be really nice for a lot of them to be able to come to a facility here. And what's happened with this small facility that I have, um, it's, I'm, I've done really well there. I would like to open a, a, a practice that actually can you know, manage the more of the clients that I want to have come. So the, these two practices um, in Wilmette on Linden actually would be some, it would be a little bit different. I would change what I'm doing at the 405 Linden um, area and have it more just for the consults back and forth and a limited amount there and use that for administrative space and then have the building that I would purchase that's 3,000 square feet um, just have the exam rooms as I noticed noted in the um, all the plans that we have keep both locations. I would keep both locations yeah I mean I don't see a reason not to and um, in interestingly I don't know how relevant it is, but the my landlord, who I, I like quite well on um, Linden, is a general contractor, and we've talked about what he might do to help me with that space. So, anyway, we you know it's just it's a nice little community there, and we all get along. So you're leasing this new space. I'm leasing. I'm no, I'm leasing the old space, and I would be buying the building for the new space. I see. Yeah. Obviously, you will also then pay the, pay for the the uh, the rehab, the necessary. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, that so would be. Is the is the I drove by there. Is mm -hmm. that building? It's demise like a condominium, like a townhouse. Do you, you do you will own only the thirty five feet of? The building is the is the kitchen store. Yes. Yeah, and it's just it's just the white building. It's a separate standalone. <laughs> 3,000 square foot building, and it's got sort of, it's got two doorways at the front, and yeah, it's it, a, it was a kitchen I, store. I think what you're talking about, it appears that it could have been two shops in the past, but. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, time, I'm sorry. I think they've yeah. reconnected them. Yeah. Okay. 
Your um, application says that you're seeking to um, operate an animal hospital, mm -hmm. and the hours are office hours. And uh, a question I have is, will you be keeping animals overnight, and will the place be staffed? I no, mean, I will not be, and, and it says it in here as well that I don't do overnight boarding or, or care for the animals. Um, I don't imagine any reason why that would happen. Um, we have all the different facilities in the area for emergency work. Um, the, my clinic downtown doesn't do any overnight boarding, and it never has. Um, and the facility I worked with before that, Family Pet in, in, um, in the city, we, we really just didn't do overnight boarding. And, you know, it's just too hard to staff and do that unless you're an emergency clinic mm -hmm. so yeah I wouldn't be doing that thank you mm -hmm. the hours on there are pretty much what we what we've been doing we um, will it, there will be extensions for I definitely often have a five o'clock emergency walk-in and that happens um, but it doesn't seem like it's a problem anywhere that I've been as an, I just have to say as an architect I'm always gonna put in my two cents about the the plan and everything obviously this is early on yeah <laughs> but you're going to hire an architect to to do the project not just the contractor because whoever oh yeah did this these, is yeah whoever did these preliminary ones i mean it's this is an architect who did this oh oh really oh yeah okay. i didn't do, i didn't use my I'm landlord sorry, i'm sorry yeah. i'm surprised <laughs> if he it or she is wa watching it was done plenty it, of yeah, code they, violations. They tried to do something quickly to give me an idea how it would look because we were really going for, you know, they said you have to have plans for this meeting. So I said, yeah. okay, here's the basic things that I want. I need to have this many exam rooms and whatever. I imagine these are going to be like those like they'll shift things. in the back somewhere, right? Yeah. You right want? now, both, well, the, the doors that are in the front of the building mm -hmm. should swing out the way they are, um, but they're actually swing in. Um, and that would be a decision that the city would have to make. But you can't have this large of a space. Anytime you have a space over 1,200 square feet, you have to have two exits. Mm -hmm. And they have to be remote. They can't be next to each other. So right now the building I would consider kind of a fire trap. I'm surprised that the, the village had Well, there's an exit at the back. There's actually, I think, two at the back. I there don't know is. that they haven't, they didn't show them. I don't know why. Well, there's one near the mechanical room, but that's an overhead door. Mm -hmm. So that's not considered an exit. I think there's another door on that, on the other but side. I, there, I took I a picture so. and I looked. I didn't see No, any. not next to the mechanical door? Well, they should show it, okay, um, but sorry. I don't think so. I don't know, but I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of different, I, 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 I'm, I'm a veterinarian. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know. I definitely do not I know that. Wanna, I just want to, I just do it to caution I you. totally appreciate that. You kidding me? I love architects. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. No, my and I do have a, a reasonable amount of architectural sort of a couple of friends and a couple other people, so I would be dealing with that pretty extensively. Okay. Um, like I mean it's an entire building, yeah. Like an architect mm -hmm. if they were an architect wouldn't design wouldn't well first wouldn't call them restrooms and um, they're way too small. I mean just stuff like that that mm -hmm. and you just have to make sure that whoever you use knows commercial architecture mm -hmm. and not residential. Okay. I'm actually correcting a residential architect that does nice work, his commercial project right now, mm -hmm. because it didn't meet a lot of the ADA standards, a lot of the other codes. So well, and I just went through that when we renovated the, built the you know, the it used one. to be a, a comic oh. store and we completely redid everything there, so. Okay. Um, the, and my landlord just renovated a building a, a, another block away that was the, he did the um, North Shore, um, it's a like a woman's hospital there, oh, okay. right on, it's on uh, Linden. So he did that whole thing and it's okay. beautiful. Just one last mm -hmm. question, I'm just curious, what are all those little rooms right across from the reception area? <laughs> the way I have my waiting rooms, it's half walls and yeah. then they're little half doors, almost like a little stall so that the dogs can not have to meet each other, but the people love to talk. Oh, so okay. as you're waiting, there's little the dog stands in there. and then the dogs sort of kept in a little corral, but people oh, okay. sit there and they yeah, can talk to like each other. It didn't look like it'd be occupiable by a person. Oh yeah, no, you just literally, they just the go in and in. they can sit in there and the dog can sit in there or whatever. Yeah, but they're pretty okay. small. Yeah, they're just little waiting areas. They're just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions for the applicant? Being none, thank you very much. You're welcome. And um, can I have a motion? I don't see anyone else. Anybody else want to speak on this? Sure, I'll make a motion. <coughs> <coughs> well, 
I think Mr. Move to recommend granting a request for special use for an animal hospital at 519 4th Street in accordance with the plan submitted. The zoning board must determine that special use should run with the use. use. Second. Go ahead. Um, well, I, I, I remember that <coughs> at least half of this when it was Mrs. D's. Um, and was sorry to see that go, but I'm glad to see that it's, uh, you've got a, an alternate use for it, and um, I do think that there's a need for it. Um, I was curious about these plans as well, since most of the rooms don't have doors on them, um, and door swings and, and how the doors work is um, usually a, a pretty important part of, of any plan. Um, so I, I'm glad that they're gonna be fleshed out further. Um, and I think that um, we're going to be having more and more service um, businesses and uh, um, fewer and fewer retail businesses. So I think this is a, a good one. Um, and if you've had a positive response already from the, the uh, place around the corner, well, then that's a good, good sign. Um, so I can support this recommendation. I just want to interject one thing. Uh, Mrs. Dees, I think, was... The other, uh, side. the other side more towards the L. Oh, yeah. So I'm not sure what this was before the okay. kitchen shop. But I just remember going to Mrs. D's with yeah. my kids. So. Yeah. Sorry, that's John. That's no, okay. it's okay. I, I mean, I, I agree. You know, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a great, I mean, you've already been successful and you're just expanding your business. I think that's great for the village and um, you can always uh, use, you know, uh, I mean, animals obviously are Everybody's got pets and, and needs, they need care, so I, I'm sure there's a high demand for it. So I, I'm sure you'll be very successful, and I can support this. Ditto. Yeah, nothing more to add. No, yeah. Nothing more either, I concur. Yeah, I mean, just to show you, I remember we, we, we were working on uh, what we call Linden Square and to uh, develop hopefully would develop into a into a retail shopping center and that hasn't worked out and uh, uh, the hope to have a Trader's Joe in this space uh, is probably not very very sound <laughs> so <laughs> given that and I think we're going to move more and more to service oriented thing in certain locations uh, rather than classic retail so I I, uh, I can support it as well can you Mr. Pelleton? Yes. Mr. Culling? Yes. Ms. Norick? Yes. Mr. Sermon? Yes. Ms. Joker Urban? Yes. Chairman Schneider? Yes. So this is a unanimous recommendation and um, you may want to come to the board meeting, Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, is it on the 11th? Yes. This is the on the outside. February 11th. So that's the mechanical room. There's no to uh, approve the meeting minutes for the Zoning Board of Appeals for yeah. Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. Do have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to approve the meeting minutes for the Zoning Board of Appeals for Wednesday, December 18th, 2019. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I move to authorize the Chairman to prepare oh. the report and recommendation for the Zoning Board of Appeals for case number 2020-Z02. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. And seeing this, there's no one in the audience left. I move to close this meeting, adjourn the meeting.